Hi, everybody. I'm Ross DeBoss, and we have one of my favorite NBA owners on today, and he's unbelievable. He's also one of the sharks on Shark Tank, and he he he's, he he actually owns and runs the club practically. I know he's not the GM, but he he gets he's a lot of say on it. But let's welcome the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, Mark Cuban. What up, Ross? What up, Dan? Thanks for having me on, buddy. Thanks for coming on. You're actually Thanks our first guest on. on our basketball episode, and we're excited about it. Um, you know, and we're excited about basketball season. Can you believe LeBron was talking about it today or yesterday? 71 days rest he has, and then they have to start the season again on December 22nd. Let me just tell you something. I'm a LeBron fan, but if you told me that I could win, what, see that guy in the background right there? Another Larry O'Brien trophy? and But this offseason would only be 71 days? I'd say hell yes. Hell yes. You know, it's only after you get it that you can complain. So, yeah. Sorry, LeBron. I'm not. I'm no. I'm with, with you it. on that, Mark. That makes a lot of sense. So, yeah. Somebody yeah, who doesn't have it wouldn't be complaining day, about that. Every day. And I'll tell you what. If they all want to just say, Mark, you have a – tell your guys they have a 10-day off season, but you're going to win the championship, they'll all say yes. Now, Mark, I have to say this. I am a Cleveland fan. And Le uh -huh. when LeBron left – and they were playing the Mavs in the championship. There was a whole thing of, of Cavs for Mavs. I'm sure right. you heard about it. With Dan Gilbert, of course. We, we, we were so mad at LeBron. I came around, of course, and I accepted the trophy that he brought us. But at the time, there was no greater heroes than you, Dirk Nowitzki. Oh, I know. I went those to Cleveland, guys. and people gave me standing ovations after we won. I mean, it was <laughs> crazy. It was crazy. <laughs> There's a famous photo of you with the trophy at the urinal, which I actually showed on the Tonight Show when you were on it, which which is I still have on my wall somewhere, in yeah. which it's you're you're going to the bathroom at the urinal and it's placed right next to you while you I'm go to the bathroom. It. It's I'm holding it while I'm peeing. Are you holding it? Yeah, yeah. we were. You know how after a championship everybody spraying champagne and drinking and getting drunk and wild, and I'm holding on to this thing for dear life, and I'm like I'm not giving it to anybody, and I go to take a pee. And I saw, I knew people were behind me with cameras and I knew someone would get a picture. And I'm like, I'm just holding this thing on one hand. There's just like the two most important things in my life in each hand. <laughs> I, 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 that, that was, that was such a great year for you. You were, it was like the thing. And you're, you're actually, you're hands on with the team. A lot of owners aren't. You travel with the team. I mean, yeah. if I want to find Mark Cuban, I just find out where the where Mavericks are playing and I know where you're at. I mean, I can find you. Yeah, I, and I, I can hunt you down kids. just so you know. So if you don't answer my calls or emails, I know how to find you. Exactly. But, but that, that, that making sense. Are you going to, is it business as usual for you traveling with the pandemic going on? Uh, the season starts in two weeks and you're in Phoenix to start the year. I mean, how, how's that going to happen? Well, it depends if this thing works. If I'm Darth Vader, maybe, you know, it, it, it just <laughs> oh, depends. Wow. It, it really just depends. Um, you know, we're taking so many precautions, but um, with family and everything, I just have to be careful. Yeah, and you do. So, you know, if I can do it, certainly I want to go to as many games as possible. But, you know, we're quarantined. I'm here quarantined. We're getting tested twice a day. Everybody who's called tier one, someone who can travel with the team gets tested twice a day. Twice a day? Twice a day. Twice a day. And there's limits on – it's not a bubble per se, but when we're whether we're at home or on the road, there's limits on what we can do, where we can go and what we can do. So, so 50 players tested positive for coronavirus before the, before camp opened. Okay. What, what do you think the season is going to bring us? What, what's your prediction? You, you've been around the league for many years. You know, the players, you know, their behavior. You're, you've been around it. What, what, what do you think is going to, what's your prediction? I don't know. Honestly, Russ, um, there obviously will be cases and there will obviously be games that won't be played. I think that's a given. But I don't think it'll be as crazy as the NFL. At least I hope it won't because there's fewer guys. And, you know, there's only 17 players on the roster, um, 15 on the active roster. And there are travel parties like 35, 36 people. And so because there's so fewer, so fewer people involved, it's a little bit easier for us to, to try to keep under control. But that said, it's not so much on the road. It's more at home that's an issue. You know, like we've had players or staff rather – where they had a child that was exposed to COVID at school. There was a reported positive case. They did contract tracing at their school. The child had been exposed. They asked the child to stay home and stay away from school. 
And so as a parent, that staff person couldn't come into practice today. And so, you know, those types of things are going to happen and we're just going to have to deal with it. And, you know, Lucas said it best. I mean, the team that stays out of COVID jail the most has the best chance to do the best in the regular season. So you brought up Luca. I'm a huge fan of his rookie of the year came in fourth last year in the MVP voting. I mean, this kid's the future. You know it. I know it. He's never going to be traded. He's somebody that you'll keep on your team forever. He's like something. I know he, it. He, he reminds me of Ross the boss. Ross the boss isn't going anywhere. <laughs> Luke is not going anywhere, as we all know. I you mean, know, a lot of people make that comparison, Ross. They do all the time, do you, Mark? I, I know it's brought up all the time. Ross Park, you know, um, Luka Doncic. Same thing. The birth. Same thing. So, so Luka, I mean, he's triple doubles. He's aver- He's going to average three points a game this year. I mean, your team is very international. You got a German guy, you got you got guys from Australia. I mean, you drafted Josh Green from Australia. You have a lot of international flair on your team. Was that done on purpose or it's just coincidental? Yeah, I mean, we like guys who know how to play and can become great. You know, I don't care where we get them. You know, if you look at the top five players in the NBA, probably four of them are Americans. And so I don't care where they come from. You know, I just want the best possible players. Now, kids growing up overseas get to play basketball more than they do here. So there may be, you know, they they get a here with the NCAA in particular um, and AAU for high school kids and younger. There's just it's just not geared towards teaching basketball. You know, it's geared towards, you know, the NCAA has got all these rules. You can't practice near as much. AAU, just because of the circumstances, they don't really practice all that much. They play so many games. And so overseas, they do a lot of practicing and a lot of drills. And that leads to, you know, some some of these kids just having a better opportunity to make the NBA. No, I think it's great. You have a, you have, you have Canadian, you have Dwight, Dwight, Dwight Powell, Trump. who I love. He was hurt last yeah. year. He's, he's somebody, I know you signed him to a good contract, but he doesn't get any press. But I love Dwight Powell. And in, in analytics, he's unbelievable. Yep. I studied him very sharply uh, in the past yeah, he couple gets, of years. He gets press in, fan, in fantasy basketball. He actually gets yeah. press. I, I had him last year. I was all over him. He's, he's, he's amazing. He's so efficient, he, yeah, because he's incredibly efficient in what he does. And you know who loves him the most is Luca, Because Dwight sets just some of the best screens in the NBA. And not only does he set a great screen, but, you know, he, he, he's got great feet. He, you know, he's got great lateral quickness. And so he can do a lot of things with Luca. He can roll hard. He can pick and pop. You know, he can create space. Just things that really benefit Luca's game. And so they're, they're close. Um, and Luca loves playing with him. When Dwight got hurt last year, Luca was the most upset of anybody. No, Dwight's a big I, kid. I, I mean, he's, he's huge. I mean, he's 6'10". Shoulders like Ross the boss. I mean, he's yeah. the real deal. Yeah, and um, another separated at birth, the triplets. Luca, DP, and Ross the boss. There you go. Yeah. Greg Matrice Ross got compares himself that. to a lot of people. I have no doubt. <laughs> but, no doubt. But, but, you know, talking about your offseason, you guys made some great moves, which you're not getting press on, but Ross the boss noticed. I love the Josh Richardson trade. For, yeah. And I love Seth Curry. Don't Thank get me you. wrong. Great shooter. But your team didn't need offense. Your team had enough offense. You guys were actually number one in the NBA last year in offense, which is great. Yep. But defense was your whole – was your problem. Yep. Yeah, we couldn't get those stops at the end of games that we no. needed. And, and so that created problems for us. And so bringing in Josh Richardson, bringing in James Johnson, re-signing Willie Cauley-Stein, getting back both Jalen Brunson and Dwight Powell, all these things will help our defense considerably. And then the kid we drafted, um, the Australian kid, Josh Green, he can D up as well. And so, you know, we, we Green's really, good and Bay's good too. Bay Bay's a monster on defense. Yeah, Tyler Bay, you know, he's going to get a shot. I mean, he's still coming around, but oh my God, the athleticism on TB and you know the the grit that he has, he's a player. I I agree. I I think the Mavs have to have people don't talk about you guys much, which you that's, like. I know you don't want you, you probably wanna, like that, right? You like yeah, you must like that. Radar. You you must like that. And I know Luca's good friends. So, somebody who I love on your team. I want to do a reality show with this guy. Is Boba? Boba. I mean, he's Boba. Bo, Boba's. He's unbelievable. This guy's the funniest guy. I met him one time when he came to LA. He's he's, he's a friend. He's a friend of a friend, and he's he's a joke a minute. I mean, and and he's seven four. He's the second tallest guy in the league, and and he and he understands English. He pretends he doesn't, oh, yeah. but he knows what you're he saying. Yeah, five languages. 
Boban's teaching me Serbian. And so, you know, it, you know, Dobro Utro, Dobro Dane, Brate. I mean, he's just, he's got a heart of gold. He's just such a good kid. And you just got to give him more playing time. He, when he gets in there, he gets the, he gets the points. He gets the rebounds. He yeah, gets I mean, the block he, shots. He, matchups, right? You can't, you can't have him in there against somebody who's big and can shoot threes because he can't get out there um, away from the paint and guard people. But when you get a matchup where it's against somebody who doesn't shoot threes, I mean, he's unstoppable. Boban's biggest concern in offense is he's so big at 7'4", when he turns, his elbows are always always face high for whoever's defending him. Right, just from and turning no around. Automatic, you know, automatic technical foul, automatic offensive foul. And so that's the biggest challenge he has. You've had, you've had such an international team. Uh, how many languages do you, do you speak other languages or do you just speak like a smattering because you've had yeah, been around a it? Smattering of here and there, you know, nothing, nothing significant. Yeah. Oh, I wondered, I wondered, you know, maybe you, maybe you're really always focused on the season you're on, but I did kind of wonder what it was like when you traded up for Luka Doncic. Don, Don, it was crazy. Sorry, name. Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, I remember it vividly because we were trying to work out a deal with Atlanta and, you know, we kind of want, knew what we wanted to do, but they kept on asking for more, obviously, which they should. And they knew what they wanted to do. And it took me calling Tony, um, their owner, and just saying, okay, Tony, just tell me what you need, and I'll give you a yes or no. And, and that's pretty much how it got done, you know, five minutes or so, probably, no, probably 15 minutes before the pick. But you knew he was the guy you really wanted, clearly. Well, right? you know, you know, but you just never know. You know, as right. much as we thought that he had a chance to be a superstar, and obviously he is, there, there's always no – look look at all the drafts over history. Look at Cleveland, right? You know, mm-hmm. they didn't what – what was the kid's name they took first that didn't pan out? Um, oh, there were many of those. Which one? Well, you know what I say, right? But um, yeah. the first draft, no one drafts somebody number one in the draft not thinking they're going to be a superstar. Yeah, and, I can't even uh, – Anthony Bennett, I think, is the one. Anthony Bennett, about. that's who it is. I can't believe yeah, I said it. Yeah, I mean, when the Cavs drafted them, they thought they were getting the steal of the draft. Everybody who picks first right. thinks that, picks second, third, you know, and so there's always risk. But, you know, we, we just love Luca either way. It just – it happened a lot faster than we expected. So with COVID, are you guys having fans in this – I know LA's not having, having any fans. We're um, allowed to. We're allowed, we're allowed to. And actually, uh, we had Disney on ice at the arena where we had like 2,500 people – we had a high school basketball tournament, the same thing, but that was, you know, last week, not this past weekend, but the weekend before, but the number of cases has increased significantly since, since then. So we'll make, I'll make the decision at some point next week. You um, will. I will. Yes. Yeah, my call. Um, and, you know, I like to have them fans, but I want to make sure it's safe. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's a, you know, it's a different world in, in LA. They're not allowing any fans at football games, basketball games, they, you name it. There's no, there's no fans. The, the 49ers actually had to move. I know. I know everything I to that. Arizona, you know, I mean, there's a percentage of the population in Texas who don't think that doesn't think COVID is real. And so it's just a whole different beast here. Has, has anybody on your team contracted it? Yeah. I mean, across the organization. Absolutely. Yeah. So you guys are, you guys obviously very careful, not doing anything crazy players. No, I mean, we're doing everything possible to protect everybody. I mean, like I said, we're, we're testing twice a day. I mean, my hands are getting raw. I'm finally getting calluses on my hands from me too. Look, me too. Hands, I know. know. And you just like your bones start to pop through. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I'm finally cognizant of when I touch my face, I'm trying to get guys all on, you know, in the same to understand just how it can be caught and transmitted, you know, cause it's just not something they typically think of. And particularly when they were in the bubble last season, um, it was, it was really safe because everybody was quarantined in the bubble. And so now they have to be extra cautious and it's just more difficult. So I wanted to ask a question about, about, you know, the fact that everybody's been home so much, you have 493,000 followers on TikTok. And yeah. I usually think of TikTok as, you know, something my kids would do, but that's not what it is. Our kids are like the gateway. They're, they're the gateway drug that gets us in there. But I wondered, did you pick up a lot of those followers during the pandemic or have you been on for oh, yeah, a long no. time? I mean, I was, I was on there when it was Musical.ly because music, TikTok bought Musical.ly and Musical.ly has been around for years. And so, I'm, you know, I'm the tech guy, so I always have to be on new platforms. My You're kids a pioneer, are 11, right? Yeah, so my kids are 11, 14, and 17. So as a parent, I want to understand them as well. But I like it because it's fun. 
But it's weird now because, you know, different generations have gone through different things. Like, you know, the millennials, young millennials are on Snapchat and they got everything on Snapchat. Now, you know, particularly my two youngest, they're on TikTok continuously. That's how they get their news. That's how they get their sports news. That's how they see the highlights. I mean, it's literally like, you know, like maybe we did with Facebook when we first started using Facebook. And now my yeah. mom is like the Facebook queen. It's just TikTok is the, the resource for everything. It's not just about dances. Like I asked my son today, um, what's the what's the hottest song and number one dance on TikTok? Because, you know, there's Renegade and I always try to keep up with it so I can have fun with it. Um, but he, he's like, Dad, I don't know. I watch highlights. And the beauty of TikTok is the way their algorithms work. They watch what you watch, and it doesn't matter who you follow. You could follow five people or 5,000 people, and you're going to get what they think is what you want and what you will like. And then they'll track to see, like, do you watch a video one time, two times, five times, 20 times? And if you watch a video more than once and the more you watch it, the more they'll program their, their algorithms. Their algorithms will learn, rather, and feed you more like that completely different than Facebook, completely different than Instagram um, or Snapchat um, or any of them for that matter. So, so we hired a social media, we hired a social media ad advisor for our, for our network that we started uh -huh. that you're on right Shout now. Shout out to Anthony. So, and, 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 and Anthony does it for ESPN, NBC. I mean, he's, he's one of the best in the business, seriously. Uh -huh. I mean, great. And he's been hawking me to join TikTok and after hearing what you have to say, I'm going to have to join TikTok now and not to come out with these funny, hilarious videos because I got to be better than Mark Cuban. That's that's my goal in life is to be better than Mark Cuban. I'm just telling. OK, so there are little old ladies and little old men doing the twist, you know, <laughs> the chubby checkers on there getting millions of views. <laughs> like it's not the stuff that you think like you think like there's the biggest stars like a girl named Charlie D'Amelio who does the dances and she's cool and all that. And, you know, kids love her. But the things that get, you know, that just take off, you would never expect. Like I had this video, my daughter made me take it down. She was doing it. They, they have these things called duets, right? Where you can duet with somebody else. Right. And they've got a lot of different special effects. And so she was doing a dance and I just sat there like this. And, you know, cause it's no looking down cause the box was up here and she's dancing there. And I got four and a half views in like three hours. And she freaked out because it's like, dad, how could you do this to me? And she's 17, you know, my friends, this and that. And I finally had to take it down. But the point is that it's not like you got to be a great dancer. If you're just having fun and being yourself and doing stupid stuff, you'll, people will respond to you. Just be yourself, you know, be the boss. That's all you need. Be the boss, like Ross, the boss. Mark, I know you're a good dancer because you, you taught dance at University of Indiana which we talked about before a long time ago on my other show. But I mean, does that help you with some of the TikTok dancing? I've oh, seen yeah. you dance no, on I'm TikTok. Not, you know, I can give these things, I can give it all, I, you know, to do the, the smoosh push, the, all this stuff. So yeah, you know, so, and some of them, I got to admit, some of the ones like my daughter wants to do are more complicated. So I have to practice with her. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, give me a few minutes, um, sometimes 20 or 30. And I'll pick up all those moves and do any of the dance moves with her. But but is that the secret to TikTok? Just be yourself? Because like I, I, so I started it up and I already love it. It's more intuitive than the other ones and, and I can have fun with it. And I'm, I'm kind yep. of a bit of a comedian. Uh, when I'm not being a therapist, I want to be making jokes and stuff. And on TikTok, it's right there. Yeah. And the other thing to do is, so, you know, there's, there's themes that happen on TikTok. So things that you think are funny to you. So there's this other kid, right? He goes the five worst names on the planet. And he just starts screaming these names. Joe, who the hell names your kid Joe? Joe is so plain. No, that's the five, the fifth worst name of the planet. What's the fourth word that was worth it? Sean. Da, 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 da. Oh. So he's going down and because my kids brought it to me to watch. What's the ultimate worst name on the planet? Mark. So <laughs> I do I do a duet with him where I'm sitting there listening like this. And then he gets to Mark and I'm like, you know, and it's getting millions of views, right? Millions of views. And then they TikTok actually took it down because he cursed in it. And you're oh, not really so have you can't curse. Views. Yeah. And so yeah, so you if you're just yourself and find other comedians, like you can, you know, someone will tell a joke and you can tell the joke your way or better or what, you know, just 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 be yourself and, and have fun with it. And and that's the thing, it doesn't matter how many followers you have, if somebody um, if you do a certain, if you have your style 
and there's other people who like that style and they watch it a lot, they'll feed your, your video into those people. And if they respond and they watch it and watch it and mo more people watch it, then they'll just keep on feeding it. And there's people that, you know, don't have any followers that have gotten millions of views. That, that's what I found. I start. I just. I just posted some some videos about my fantasy football Sunday and how you know, like I changed my shirt to try to win. You know that kind of superstitious, superstitious stuff. stuff. And suddenly I had tons of views. I was like, I, I, like on Twitter, I I released something on Twitter and it's just crickets. But like yeah. on TikTok, you release it. The algorithm's completely different. So the way they use AI, it drives everything. That's what makes TikTok is brilliant for two reasons. One, their algorithms, their, the AI that they use is brilliant. Two, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars promoting it to, to get all those viewers, but they were able to keep it, to keep them because if you like something, you're gonna get a continuous diet of more of that. So if you like NBA highlights, you're just gonna keep, you know, so when, when there's a great highlight, you know, a Luca step back um, and you're watching it over and over and over again, then they're just gonna keep on feeding you more of that because they've seen that what you like. And that's what makes it different than all the others. Mark, why do you think Quibi failed? Um, it was there wasn't a compelling reason to try it. Um, they tried to make it about the form factor and the technology when it should have just been more like Netflix, um, where it's just great content in short yeah. form and come on and get the content. And oh, by the way, here's how you can watch it if you want to watch it that way. So if you want to watch it on your TV, like everybody else just happens to be short form, go for it. And so they, you know, it would shock me because no one understands story better than Jeffrey Katzenberg. And, and so I was really surprised. So it should have done well. It really, really should have done well. They just promoted the wrong angle. Well, oh, they had Justin Timberlake. They had Brad Pitt. I mean, they had huge names. They, they, they asked me to work on it and I turned it, I was working on another show, but long story short, I, I didn't like their their game plan. I, I kind of heard about it and I read about it and I didn't think it was going to. I think people don't want to pay for a service they can get for free, like you just mentioned on TikTok. Well, I, or I, Instagram. I don't think they mind paying, right? Because we pay for Netflix, but the, content, the content's got to be great. Yeah, and they you're have right. a lot of great content, but they didn't lead with the content. You know, if it would just been Netflix like, you know, or you know, pick one, HBO Now, like whatever, any of HBO them, right? Max. Yeah. Disney, right? Or yeah, HBO Plus, or Max, right? Um, then people would have tried it. Give them the seven-day um, grace period, seven-day free trial, right. and they would have tried it. And if they love the content, boom, you're okay. I mean, look what's happening now with um, Time Warner putting their movies. They're going to stream them on HBO Max first. You know, something that we did 15 years ago with Bubble and – you know, 2929 Productions, the Landmark Theaters. Um, I remember. And Magnolia Distribution. And it's going to work. It's going to work great because you're- I, I thought it's huge. Stuff. Like the Matrix is going to be on HBO Max. It, it's just huge. I mean, I as yep. you know, I love the Matrix. You love the yep. Matrix. We're all excited it's about the lot. Matrix. But Absolutely. I mean, there it, it's, it's gonna, the theater business. I know you were kind of in the theater business a little bit well, with Landmark. Yeah, yeah. I've been there. I love your theater. I've, I've been there many oh, times for premieres. Yeah. Um, my partner was prescient, you know, we sold him a couple of years ago. So we were fortunate we missed all this. Well, but I was there when you guys had it. In yeah. But when we, yeah, when we did it, we, we allowed day and date releases because we knew that there were people who wanted to go to theaters to watch a movie. And there were people who wanted to, you know, stay at home and watch a movie. And there's a market for both, but you can't pretend that people, you know, you can't pretend that people don't want, don't want to watch movies. How they watch them, how they want them, where they want them, when they want them. Well, my, my brother, want. my brother works for Disney. He does distribution for film, and he's in charge of the whole West Coast. And he's he's practically looking for a new job now because yeah, yeah, because it's going to be those tough. days well, are over. You know, it's not that theaters will go out of business; it's just <clears> there'll be half as many. Yeah, and if, there's, if there's half as many theaters, all those theaters will be fine. This is one of the things that I think is so great about Mark. What what I do know of you and people like you, the innovators, you're always you understand where things are going and that that's, and you need to be ahead on that. And yeah, so I mean, it's interesting. Really, yeah. yeah I, mean, that, I mean, look, that's part, that's the fun part about being a geek, but it, you know, that's why I work at it. I mean, I read hours a day trying to keep up with all this technology stuff, but if you can take the tech and apply the business and mix them together, it's not hard to kind of see where trends are going to go. Right. So I had, I had a follower ask me if I said, I'm, I'm going to interview Mark Cuban and I sh is there anything I should ask him? And he said, Ask him if, if I'm in college, what fields should I be looking at right now? 
AI, 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 anything related to artificial intelligence, you've got to understand AI going forward. That's going to drive everything that we do. If here's the internet, here's mobile computing, here's artificial intelligence. It's going to impact everything, all businesses. If you look at the top market cap companies on the stock market across the world, the top 10 are all the best at AI in the universe. That's why, oh, they wow. have the, that's why they're trillion dollar plus market caps because they're the best in the world at using artificial intelligence. And they'll also be right, taking now. over the world. They'll also be taking over the world soon too when the yep. robots take when the robots take over the world as we all when know the singularity the happens. So the that, singularity, that happen. absolutely. So Mark, really quick before we go, I want predictions out of you. Eastern Conference, who's your number one team out of the East? I don't make any predictions, boss. You know. Okay, no predictions. Who's your who's the most what team is the most stacked? Not gonna win, but the most dangerous team that you're not looking forward to play in the East. In the East, probably Milwaukee. I'd say Milwaukee and then um, Boston or Philadelphia. And Miami, you think, is just a flash in the pan? No, I think the team is good, but I think there were a lot of circumstances. You know, I think Milwaukee got that much better, so they moved ahead of Milwaukee. Um, And Philly, we'll see, but I think they got that that much better. And the Westbrook Westbrook deal? um, It'll be interesting to see. John Wall is good. I mean, people don't realize how good he was before he got hurt, but we have to see how healthy he is. Okay, he so some box help. He might need some of Dan's help, um, but he's he's definitely got. To Mark, send 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 Mavs my way if you need me. So, so supposedly supposedly he could have played in May. That's what he said. He, he was healthy in May. That's what he told reporters that he could have played in May, but he would he just didn't want to he didn't want to play until December right. basically. He, he, but right. We'll see. I, I think, and then the West. I love your team. Who, do you think the Lakers are their, your biggest competition this year? Yeah, the Lakers, the Clippers still are really good. Um, you know, the Suns got really good. The Suns got good with Paul a lot. With Chris Paul. I mean, Portland. I mean, there's no slouches in the West. No. It's just a sport. And even Sacramento. I mean, with Everybody's Fox, be, yeah, with Fox and White, Whiteside. They got Fox, Whiteside, and they have they, they, they have your old guy from North Carolina. Um, uh, Basically. Yeah, I mean, yep. he's unbelievable. I mean, so the West is loaded. It's going to be a fun season. I hope everybody's safe. I'm, I'm, I just hope everything works out. I know you're coming to LA. I'm not going to bug you for tickets because I can't go to the game. I can't go. Not allowed. Else, right? not allowed. But you can get one of these, boss. <sighs> yeah, I, I have, I have mask. something similar somewhere around my office. So I have to find it, but. Well, Mark, good luck this season. Thanks for being a good friend. And if anything we can do for you, let us know. You you are the man. And and, hey, I got to do my shout out. Friday night's ABC for Shark Tank and the NBA premieres December 22nd. So in two weeks, two weeks from today, we start up, man. It's going to be crazy. It's going to be crazy. I can't wait. It's going to be great. I'm excited. You're excited. Ross, Ross the Boss predicts a huge season. It's going to be tremendous. Mark, that's Mark Cuban. Thanks for coming on. Thanks, and uh, Thanks, Mark, man. I'll talk to you soon. You got it. Appreciate it, guys. Take care. Okay. Thanks, Stay pal. Safe.